uh, he'll get, he's had his help is on the way. So we appreciate that. We'll get Rita to sing while Bert gets her song. Okay, that's okay. So, yeah, come on. Track two back there, if you want to throw it in there, Kennedy. That's all right. So, she going to get her song ready? That's okay. Say I've kept the faith, but my 
want to hear him say, well done. I want to know I've won the race. Hear Jesus say I've kept the faith. But most of all, I want to hear him say, well done. Praise the Lord. Ready, Sister Bird? Do you all have Sister Bird's track ready back there? You know which one? Yeah, come on, so they're ready for you. farm yesterday working and uh, praising the Lord and just just so happy isn't it good you're out doing something whether you're working in flowers or whatever you're doing and and just feel the Spirit of God I tell you what I was riding yesterday on the mower and the Spirit of the <clears throat> Lord just came on me and I was singing and praising and I was so thankful yesterday it was just a great day it makes you get through the day better, doesn't it? Whenever the Lord comes on the scene and you're just thinking about him and praising. And I'll tell you something, the church I've been thinking about when I remember when I was a kid, we used to have a choir here. Do we still have the old choir books anywhere? I'm working on this. I've got to get with the right people. 
And, uh, and so we can do praise and worship in the mornings to worship him. And I remember the choir, people would sing, and boy, it was really a movement here in the church. I like that, you know it? I do. I tell you what, to praise the Lord is what we're doing here today. We come here on Sundays to worship and praise. And uh, I tell you what, we truly worship and praise here, and I thank the Lord for that. I asked Sister Brenda to sing a song for us today. Um, and I seen uh, Chase go out and look at his papa and he did this this morning, so he's watching him. And uh, I like Drew, I like your coat, Drew, that's awesome. I said when he come in, I said, and the Knicks choose Drew Noble. <laughs> he just laughed at me, so that's what those coats look like when they choose NBA stars, so yeah, so. I never was picked for anything. <laughs> it's sharp, Poacher. You look sharp. You do stand out in the crowd. <laughs> Payday's coming, right? Amen. Let's be ready. Look up. Be ready. That's all I got to say. Look up and be ready. Payday's coming. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Sometimes my steps grow weary as I struggle all alone. Sometimes I feel I'm all alone, yet I still carry on. For a brighter day it's coming, and it thrills my heart to know. Yeah, thank you, Sister Brenda. Hey, I also want to mention uh, Noah. Uh, he graduated college, and uh, very proud of Noah this morning too. So, <clears throat> so <clears throat> I missed you. Did anyone else graduate college? Or 
Ju just now, I'm an idiot. <laughs> When'd you graduate college? <laughs> Sorry, Justin. Yeah. I love you, so, yeah. Hey, they move out, unless they call me, I don't even ever look back. I'm like, somebody, somebody asked, said, you got two kids? I said, I think I do, but I never see them. So, yeah. But very proud of everybody. You guys graduating in, in college and high school, man, so exciting. Uh, I tell you what, it's exciting, and exciting because you all are here in the church, and wow, what a way to start your life in church. I wished I would have done that. Really, really do. Really wished I'd have stuck in there, but I didn't do it. But the Lord brought me back. I was thinking about that yesterday. Was, so I was so excited to think about when I got saved on an Easter morning. And wow, why, man, did it change my life. I thought about sitting behind that old trailer and my two boys out there playing. And I noticed the sun, as the sun moved, it was getting shorter and shorter. And we would back up against that trailer we lived in just to get shade. And I tell you what, it reminded me, the Lord just spoke to me right there and dealt with my heart. That's the way life is. It's short. And at the end, you, you want to be in with the Lord. You don't want to die and go, I didn't want to die and go to hell. I didn't want that. And I tell you what, I got up and went to church. Somebody finally invited me to church, believe it or not. Everybody loved the Lord, but nobody ever told me about church. Not much at all. And uh, boy, I tell you, I went and got saved. And my, what a life. He sure changes you, doesn't he? So much better. I'm so thankful for what God does for me. That was why I was so excited. There's the people driving by and I was doing this, mowing. They were waving. I was praising the Lord. And they were praising the Lord and they didn't even know it. So, <laughs> waving back at me. I said, yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. I love the Lord. I tell you, I'm excited. And I know every service we have, people don't jump up and shout. It's very tiring through the week, some things we do. And that's okay. Uh, because I tell you what, when we do have one where it's a shouting, it's because the Lord brings it on. And I tell you what, God is certainly good to us. And we have the greatest news to spread about the gospel of Christ. And I thank God we can spread it. I've spread it at this week. Told people God's opened doors. And I tell you what, he's good. So you preacher or am I? Come on. <laughs> I do appreciate our pastor and his wife and uh, family. Be this morning, uh, have your Bible, Matthew chapter 13. Some have been uh, teaching here in the uh, Sunday school lesson. They've been teaching on the seven parables in Matthew chapter 13. We're going to read verse 1. <clears throat> the Lord's laid this on my heart, and some, there's seven distinct parables here. And the uh, 13th chapter. But God has seven. You'll find seven in the 13. Most people look at 13, and those that are superstitious, I'm not superstitious, but uh, the good thing is you're going to find the seven in there as well. And God's seven is a number of completion and perfectness. And God surely does have a word in each and every parable, a lesson to teach unto us. And Matthew chapter 13, beginning with verse 1, the same day went Jesus out of the house and set by the seaside, great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship, and he sat. The whole multitude stood on the shore. He spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he had sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. The fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth good fruit, and a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Now listen to verse 9. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Hear what? Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. 
the Spirit of God. You'll find that uh, in the book of Revelations, when he's writing unto the seven churches, it usually is always finishes out with, Behold, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is speaking unto us today. So we must, uh, in order to hear some things, uh, we must have some preparedness about us and be uh, paying attention and so forth to be able to hear accurately. Uh, sometimes, uh, many of us, and even myself included, and right in there with you, I don't hear so well. I find it a little bit as I go longer in life, my hearing is getting a little bit less. And then sometimes I don't maybe hear uh, quite always exactly hear. I hear kind of what I want to hear. Uh, sometimes we call that selective hearing. Isn't it interesting? We can tune in to a conversation that's probably 30 feet away and we can hear that pretty good, but we can't hardly hear the person that's standing in front of us. It's because we're not really interested in what they're saying. I mean, you, you got a dull look upon your face, but you're more interested in what someone else, so you're paying more attention to them than you are to what you're talking to the person in front of you. Sometimes you're hearing. There was uh, an evangelist, a healing evangelist, that come and traveled around from community to community, and he went into a small town, and he set up his tent and held a great meeting. Many people would came each night, a record in attendance, and many people lined up, and as the healing evangelist, he laid his hands upon them and said, Be ye healed, and they were healed. One man, he had a problem with his hearing, and he stood within that line, and he come before that evangelist, and that evangelist said, What is your problem, sir? He said, Oh, he said, Some of those that were helping him said, The servants are with him said he's got a problem with his hearing. He laid his hands upon him and he said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And he said, now, he said, how's your hearing now? He said, well, I won't know. It's not till next week, the court hearing. <laughs> but you got to be careful how you hear things. That's why the book of James in there says, be slow to hear. Because you often, so many times, what you hear from some people from one to another isn't always the truth. And it gets us distorted along the way. For instance, I could say something like this. As the Apostle Paul told the First Thessalonians in chapter 4, verse 13, he said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Notice I said to be ignorant, brethren. But if I left, if I left the to be off, it sounds like this. I would not have you ignorant, brethren. He said, well, those two words makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? It does. It changes everything, doesn't it? changes the entire meaning of things. Now, God's not uh, here. He's trying to teach us something here than the parables. At this time of year, uh, I look across and you see the fields out here and the farmers. They're trying to make, as the old saying, they're making hay while the sun's shining. Now, they're not tending to the hay right now, but you know they're planting their crops. And we've had this past week, we've had a lot of sunshine, so many are trying to make use of it, is what I'm saying there, and uh, get out there and plant their crops. You've got to have a seed time if you want a harvest time. And we're blessed with all four seasons we experience here, and uh, from spring and summer and fall and winter. But there's a time. There's always a time to sow. And here Jesus is teaching unto his disciples here by the Sea of Galilee, and he's on the outside of the house. Now there's four parables here. He deals with things that are without, within the world. And three, he deals, he walks inside the house, and he deals within. Now it's from, with some things that goes on within. And it works the same in our life. He's dealing with things that are without in the world around us, and how we can relate to and then he goes in the house and he deals with some things that we have to deal with within in our own lives. And he uses the parables. He uses parables. A parable, just simply put, it is an, it is an earthly meaning. Uh, it is an earthly saying with a heavenly meaning. He uses things in nature to relate to the spiritual to teach us lessons. To some, to the lost man, even the Pharisees here were following Jesus and they always were plotting to see what he would say to catch him in a word. 
Surely people wouldn't plot against Jesus. Surely people wouldn't plot against you in the workplace. Surely they wouldn't conspire some of your friends and, and pull together a little group and crowd and come up with something. Surely people wouldn't do that. But these religious leaders did. They followed Jesus around and tried to catch him at his saying. So Jesus here was going to teach some truths, but he taught it in a concealing way. And it could only be revealed unto those that knew the Spirit of God and the presence of God. You see, a parable, it conceals truth, but it also reveals. And it takes the very things. An earthly meaning with a heavenly saying. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying here, sometimes they're called the seven parables or the mysteries in the Word of God. There's some mysteries in the Word of God. There's some things the Bible says, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. And then another one is the Trinity itself and the mystery of godliness. How God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But there are some mysteries that have been revealed down through time. And even under the great the Apostle Paul was mightily used of the Lord and he received exceedingly great revelations. And the Lord allowed a thorn to keep him a base. A messenger of Satan to buffet him at times. To Torment him a little bit to keep him humble to rely upon the grace of God and the mercies of God. It was through the Apostle Paul that you come across the rapture of the church and how he revealed certain things in due time. It's giftings of the Holy Spirit, but the natural man, some people say, I can't understand what the Word of God says. Have you ever heard that? Sure. Well, changing Bibles really won't help you. No. Having a born-again experience will help you. You see, you need to know the one who wrote the book. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, he said, The natural man. And they were, those Pharisees were religious, but they didn't know Jesus. Those disciples, disciples were following him, and they knew the presence of God, and he was enlightening them. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, he said, The natural man receiveth not the things of God, neither can he understand them. Oh, you've got an in-house teacher. He's called the Holy Ghost. So when you open up the Word of God and ask the Spirit of God to teach you, He will give you, He will illuminate you. The Word of God is life. Now, He teaches us the parables. and going to reveal us some truth. Use these things in nature. The farmers are out right now sowing and working out here in the field, sowing their seed. I sowed some grass seed. It brought me back when I was on the farm as well. And here's the title this morning, Broadcasting the Seed. Broadcasting the Seed. You hear that terminology used in television and in radio because whenever they broadcast something across the air, it goes in all different directions. And I remember on the farm, as well as recently here sowing some grass seed, but I had a bag full of seed, and we would take that and reach our hands in there, and I just did it the old-fashioned way, and I just scattered it like this. And it was called broadcasting. Broadcasting the seed. You put that seed up over that ground, and you don't know where, which way it's going to fall, or where it's going, but you put it in all different directions. And you cover that area. That's what called, is called broadcasting. And that's what Jesus here. Now notice he takes the seed and the sower. And in Palestine, this was not unusual for many of them did the exact same thing. They took an old sack and they went out there and they began to sling the seed across the field. So Jesus teaches us here in the Word of God. He's showing the seed and the sower. And uh, notice what the seed is. The seed is the Word of God. You know, this Bible, as I already said, the seed has, why does it, he use the seed for it? The seed has a life within it. The seed has the ability within that to bring forth life. And this Bible is the living Word of God. It's a talking book. Every time you open up the Word of God, God's Word will talk to you. It will speak to you. He can help determine God's will for your life. Well, the Word of God here is used as a seed, the life-giving seed. It germinates and brings forth the life. Within every seed, there's a life. 
but a seed is very small. Well, don't underestimate the power of God's Word. If you've ever seen a cracked piece of pavement and a seedling gets down into that pavement, do you know before long what will happen? It will grow up and when it does, it will push that pavement. It will push it back. Never underestimate the power of God's Word. Never underestimate on Facebook one scripture that you share upon that and you're broadcasting. Never underestimate a Bible tract that you hand somebody. Never underestimate on the workplace that you share a scripture with someone else in the workplace, wherever it may be within your community, or standing behind the sacred desk and preaching the Word of God. Never underestimate the power of God's Word. Well, it's life-giving, isn't it? But there is that little seed, sometimes just a little seed that you sow. John eleven thirty five. 35, he said, Jesus wept. But you could say two words. And if it's just a one word, the one word, and there's Jesus. There's enough in that one word. There's none other name, the Bible said in Acts 4, 12, none other name given under heaven, whereby men must be saved than at the name of Jesus. <laughs> Well, there's power in the name of Jesus, but there's wonder-working power in the precious Word of God. Oh, never underestimate something so little, and God makes it so big and so great. These big oak trees come out of a little old acorn. You see how vast they are, and how many feet in the air, and the branches shoot forth, and how strong they are, and the weather, the seasons, and the time. But then within every little seed, there is a potential. You see, there is a lot, a lot within the seed. You see, there is a hole. You take an apple seed. There is a whole orchard within one seed. So, oh, preacher, you know that seed has the ability to keep on reproducing. And that's what the seed does. It multiplies. And the word of God as it goes forth. But now here, you see, it has to be sowed. Now the seed here, it, what good is the seed if the, if the farmer himself, if he just leaves it in the bag and he puts it in his storage in the barn where the mice won't get it in a safe place, what good is the seed? Will he, will he have a crop that way? No. Can he expect anything? No. But So he's got to take the seed and he's got to take the, the precious Word of God. He's got to take this life-giving seed. There's nothing wrong with the seed. Keep this in mind. There's nothing wrong. This is a 100%. The seed's going to do something. I assure you, the seed, there's power in the Word of God. There's life within it. Doesn't matter. So small. But there's an orchard. It has a multiplying effect. And when the Word of God's preached, but it's got to be nothing wrong with the seed. Farmers look at that and you want to buy a good seed crop, you, you always look at the tag on it and the label and see what the germination and how much it comes up. So they take the seed, that's the word, the word of God. Nothing wrong with the Word of God. It's about how people though hear nothing wrong with the sower, so you've got to have the seed, you've got to have your sower, and the sower is the people. And God's given us Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. He said, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? So somebody's got to broadcast the seed. Somebody's got to preach and proclaim the Word of God. Somebody's got to share. How does he share? In Psalms 126, verse 6, he's got to have passion. You want a good sower, he's got to have passion. Passion for what? Passion for people. Passion with a burden. In Psalms 126 verse 6 says, He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again, bringing his sheaves with him. So once he weeps up over that seed, he's got a desire. He wants to see a harvest. He wants to see something come up. He's expecting that seed to come to fruition and do something good. Oh, he's got a passion. He's got a burden for souls and soul winning. He weeps up over them. Do you know if you put seed, most of you know if you put a little seed and soak it in water, it helps to go a little faster, doesn't it? Well, not only has passion, but he has a partnership. He is in partnership with 
God in heaven. Hard, there are some, uh, very rare, but it's hard for a farmer to be an atheist. A farmer must work, and he does not work with uh, Mother Nature. He works with the God in heaven. He works with the rain. It is God who gives the rain. It is God who gives the ground. It is God who puts the nutrients there. It is God who brings the sunlight. It is God that he must recognize. God who gives the seed. It is the Father in heaven. Yes, he must work and he told, but he's in a partnership. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, do you realize some sow and someone else waters? But God brings the increase. The harvest belongs to the Lord. And the Lord is the one. Yeah. The seed is under the ground once it's been sowed. If it finds a lodging place in the ground. And then he draws it up. The sun draws the seed up out of the ground. Isn't that wonderful? You see, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Son, the light of the world. And when he is preached and proclaimed, that he draws the seed. And that which is hidden underneath the surface begins to manifest and it breaks through. And there it is, someone makes a public profession of the Lord Jesus Christ. They've had a breakthrough. They've had a born-again experience. All because they received the seed of God deep down in the recesses of their soul. Oh, that's good preaching. Not only you're in a partner, so you see some sow, some water, but God. Ultimately, God. Don't look at a man. Don't look at a woman. You look at God and give Him glory. He's in a partnership, but then he has to be patient. No one sows and expects automatically a great harvest. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Save you a whole lot of time, you farmers, wouldn't it? No sooner you know, when it comes to being a teacher, you know one of the things is, a minister even of the gospel, not everybody hears and gets it the first time. Do you know why Jesus... Peter, in the Word of God, he had to keep calling him. Peter, repeating things to Peter. He didn't get it the first time. Peter, feed my lambs. Peter, feed my sheep. Peter, feed my sheep. Peter, do thou lovest me more than these? Peter was often called three times Peter. He was a Pete and a repeat. Have you ever talked to your children sometimes and you say, I need you to do this, and they go off. I say, okay, I want you to do this again. And then maybe the third time around, oh, you wanted me to do that. I got it. <laughs> uh, I'm not just saying it. I'm just saying in, in general, all of us are like that. We're kind of like that, so we have to be repetitive. Some don't think a minister. Some, you know, there's hard, very little you're going to see me with a little bit of notes. Because you know why? I trust in the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Lord helps me. I teach uh, mind, study the Word of God. But you know, the Lord, He gives me the, the spiritual truths in the Word of God. And I jot down a little outline and title here and so forth. But you know, the Lord I have to pay. And seldom someone will say, Now, Brother David, I've seen you preach that. I've seen you must have preached on the parable of the seed and the soul. You told it before. And they think you got the exact same sermon. Kind of hard when you're having to get exactly. <laughs> you see, God, once you preach something as a minister, He preaches it and God will give you more light upon it and He helps you to grow a little more and you learn a little more. The Word of God is ever learning. You may write down beside your Bible, David preached this here in May in 2021 and you know what? David may preach that again in 2000. It may be another time. It may be uh, 2022 or something if I did. Oh, we heard that one before. Now listen to that. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Some people think they already, the danger in the Word of God is they've already heard something and seen something. Therefore, it can't be ever learning and it can't be life within the Word of God and they shut their mind down. They close. I think I know what he's going to talk about. I know what he's going to say. But very quickly, a farmer has to have patience. Galatians 6, 2. He said, unto him, be not weary and well doing, for you shall reap. Now here's the thing. I'm going to move on quickly. You've got to be patient. You've got to be patient with people. 
You got to be kind. You got to be patient. It takes a while. Not everybody gets it all at once. Aren't you glad God is patient with me and you? Amen. I sure am glad. I'm glad the Lord is long-suffering and he's patient with each and every one of you. And you did not get it. You did not begin. You were a born-again Christian, just a babe in Christ. And you were crawling around. And finally you got up one day and you stood on your own two feet and began to stammer and walk across the, the floor. Spiritually, I'm speaking. And you walked across and you fell again. And aren't you glad every time you fail the grace of God while the enemy wants to put you down, Jesus says, come and I'll pick you up. He lifts you back up again, says, you know what? Dust yourself off. Keep on walking with the Lord. And before you know it, you're walking and you're talking and you've gotten stronger in the Lord because he is a patient God. Very quickly sometime now, I want to get to the soil. Now, there's nothing wrong with seed. There's nothing wrong with the sower. You say, it's the methods. No. You say, I can talk like this and teach. Sometimes I get more preachy, a little more preachy. Sometimes we can say, hey, I go down to the chilly waters up Jordan. And you all walk down. And you know, down there. My... It doesn't matter your method. I'm just, I'm not making light of nobody's style or anything. Just making a point. It doesn't matter your method. Doesn't matter how. You could, you could broadcast a seed like that. You could do it in a 180. Doesn't matter your method. You can even quote scripture and be in the flesh and you know it won't change the power of God's word. Now, you've got to have anointing and the anointing I know when you preach. But I'm going to tell you something. Jonah went to Nineveh and he was in the flesh. But he proclaimed God's word and the people responded. And I want to tell you, the power is in the gospel and in God's word, not in the man that proclaims it. It doesn't matter his method, whether he is someone like John Hagee or Billy Graham. It doesn't matter how they preach and proclaim God's word. What matters is what is being said and how that you're hearing it. Nothing wrong with the seed, nothing wrong with the sower. Now let's look at the soil, but really something's wrong with the soil. Very quickly. Sometimes you'll notice the first one here is a seed fell. And he said in there in the word of God, some seeds fell by the wayside. All these are four different types of soil and the way the seed fell. It all represents how the word of God is being received and how the soil has to be prepared. Most of you know, you've heard me pray many times, and I'll say, the Lord, I'll say, give us ears to hear, spiritual eyes to see, and hearts that are receptive to receive the engrafted Word of God. Do you know, if you come in, oh, hard heart, is a, the seed fell by the wayside, and the wayside is where someone has walked repetitively up over a certain piece of ground, and they have tamped it down, and it has gotten so packed and so tight, there's no way the seed is going to penetrate within that soil. It's sitting on top of the surface. And do you know what happens? Here comes the fowls of the air. They come flying in and takes the seed. It represents the bird, represents the wicked one, the devil, because they understand it not, and quickly he takes it away and snatches it away. An old hard heart, an old hardened out heart, Mm. And listen, you know how people get hard? A lot of people get hard-hearted. And it's easier for a person who's younger to get saved than an older. But older people do get saved. But it's more rare. Because they get set in their ways. Some people are dull of hearing, and they've heard something so much they get dull of hearing it. United States is that way. We've got the gospel and said, brother, why ain't we? We've got it on the radio. We've got it on the internet. We've got it on Facebook. We've got it on television. Why aren't we seeing all this great harvest? Nothing wrong with the seed. Nothing wrong with the sower. Something wrong with the soil. I said, oh, there's something wrong is the way that you hear and how that you perceive. And I can assure you in this service this morning, not everybody's attentive. Some have already, they got a hard heart. They won't let it receive. They've already turned it off. They've turned off the gospel, turned off the message. 
here comes that wicked one and he snatches it away. Takes it right out of the heart. They've gotten hard. They've gotten packed in. They're hard. They're not only hard hearted, they're hard of hearing. Read on down. You'll find out that Jesus in his word teaches us about the verse 15. The people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing. They've heard it so much. They've heard it repetitively. Repetitively met over, said over and over again. And you know what? They've got dull of hearing. I'm so sick of hearing about that. I'm so sick of hearing this. It's always on the TV. It's always on the radio. And there's some things and you already, some of your minds are already like, ching, ching. You've heard so many times that you're dull of hearing. You're tired of hearing. You go to the, the gospel though, and I appreciate all of you all, but I'm saying in general, as a nation, Many of them's heard it and heard it, but you go to other countries and they're hungering for it. People are getting saved and grows and they, because they're hungry. They travel for miles to hear the word of God. It's hard for some of us to travel across the street. Preacher, we're not dull of hearing it. I've heard about Jesus all my life. Yes, you are. Some are not, I'm not saying all you, I'm saying some are dull of hearing it. Now, you all come to church because you want to hear the word of God. Listen how you come. You've got to prepare your heart to prepare to receive. Then secondly, you see the hard heart. You see the shallow heart. The shallow heart is the emotional here. That's what Jesus said. He said when the seed fell, he says here in the word of God, he said verse 4, he said, and then he said, in, excuse me, verse 5, some fell upon the stony places. Now he wasn't just talking of rocks on top of the ground. It had surfaced beneath the soil, but underneath the soil was a rock. And just had enough dirt on top of that surface to where the seed took forth, but it had no root, had no depth. And when the heat, the heat is represent trials and troubles came in their life, and it tested their faith. So you don't know you really have faith until it's put to the test. And you know what happens is they have no root, they have no depth, and all of a sudden, you've seen plants out here, and they just wither and they dry up. There's nothing. They're shallow. They're the shallow-hearted Christian. They got a superficial, a surface type is all they hear. They're caught up in emotions. Do you know that represents the flesh? The five senses. They base everything off the five senses. The taste, the touch, the smell, the sight, hearing, seeing. If I threw a helicopter spin on you this morning and ran up down the aisle, somebody say, oh, hallelujah, what a service. Huh? Oh, you say, preacher, you're out there. I'm telling you the truth. See, people base it upon what the singers and what the, 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 how it's doing rather than how the Spirit of God's moving. I can be sitting in a pew, feel the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God bless my soul and move me. I'm not moved by how somebody else, I'm not looking over here to see whether somebody else is getting with it over here, wiggling and jiggling or whatever, they're getting blessed, and I hope they're truly in the Spirit of God. But then there's others that come over here just doing to watch, and they base it up off of what they feel, what they see, and what they hear. And if we like it, we'll, we'll be all for it. I've seen more crowds at times, and don't say it's not emotionalism because if it's certain things and uh, nothing, ball games and things like this, how come people get so caught up in those? And when one stands up and they do the wave, and then next thing they start the movement, it goes all the way around the stadium. Because you were moved by man. That's good preaching. It's shallow. They're shallow. shallow. Hearted. Surface. They base everything off what they taste, they touch. That's the flesh. Remember, you got the devil. You got the flesh. You have to contend with three enemies of the Christian. And you got to get your flesh out of the way, brother. You got to get your heart prepared. So when you come in the Word of God, I don't want to have a hard heart toward nobody. I don't want to have a hard heart full of bitter and envy. I don't want to come in in the flesh. I want to pray that, Lord, put me in the Spirit. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to have an ear to hear what thus saith the Lord. I need the Word of God. More than anything else, 
I need the infallible, indestructible word of the living God. That's what feeds my soul. It's the manna that comes down from heaven. It's a life transforming word of God. Then I will show you the half hearted. Now watch here very quickly. The third is the seed. And he says, this seed, it fell within the soil. And when it came up, there was thorns and weeds. The ground wasn't been clean. It represents the worldliness. Is this all making sense now? And you see, it's half-hearted Christian. They want to hold on to their sin. And they want salvation. They want just as much as the world get as close as much as the world they can get. And they want God. And I hear the word of God say, Love not the world, neither the things of the world. And if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Is that Bible? Help me pray. Huh? Well, I want more of the world, preacher. They're seeking after riches. They're seeking after fortune. They're seeking after fame. But the word of God says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom and all his righteousness. All these other things shall be added unto you. Don't seek to be rich. Seek the face of God. Seek the hand of God and watch God bless you for it. <laughs> you know why people, when the word of God's preached and proclaimed, they're, they're hard-hearted. And some are superficial and they're shallow-hearted. And then thirdly, they're half-hearted. They're not really the other things are choking out the word and they're not coming into fruition. And finally we get to the good ground. Where the seed fell, it fell into the good ground. Where it was received. Oh, this was good soil. Listen, we're coming from without. Surface. Here's what happens. The Word of God comes from without in the world. Hearing goes through the flesh. Deep down, gets past the surface. Deep down, what he's talking about the heart is your innermost being. Deep down in the Word of God, that's where the Word of God, and they become a hearer spiritually, and a doer, and it transforms their life. It brings forth fruition. You see, what he's really after, what the Lord is wanting to see is fruit. He said, you are to bring forth fruit. I mean, righteousness living. I mean, there is to be some holiness. There is to be some love and some joy and the fruits of the Spirit, peace and temperance. And these say, there ought to be some fruition within your life because whenever someone comes to truly know the Word and receive the Word of God, it transforms their very life. In Psalms 119, verse 11, the psalmist said, I will hide thy Word in thy heart that I may not sin against God. Where are you going to hide it? Deep down in the recesses of your soul, in your spiritual man, that spiritual man, well, you got to have the Word of God so you can grow and that man can come up in maturity in Christ and be Christ-like nature and take on a Christ-like nature and bring forth fruit. The seed fell into good ground. You have to receive the Word of God. I wonder here this morning, have you ever received the Lord Jesus Christ? You're here this morning, you're not saved. If you're not saved, never been born again. Have you ever received the word of God? In John 1, 12, to as many as receive them, to them, they become the sons of God. Have you received the word? You have to receive the word into your heart, into your life. Have you ever received the Lord Jesus Christ? You realize you're a sinner and need to be saved. You place your full faith in him. He'll gloriously save your soul. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, the word of God, if you're here this morning, I can assure you, some already got a hard, they got a closed out mind. They got a hard heart. They done tuned it off, tuned you out. And some have got just a shallow, a shallow experience. Third, sometimes the worldly, and sometimes it's a wondering mind. And you're wondering about already your attention span. You're not on the Word of God. I'm not going to stand back by the door and ask you what I preach. <laughs> I'm not going to test you like that or anything, but <laughs> mark sometimes humorously and 
then sometimes I wonderly, he says, Brother David has a good message on Adam. I didn't even preach on Adam. He jokes around with me. Then I wonder, though, about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> but has everything to do. Have you ever seen so much, and, and this is a situation, ADD, attention deficit disorder? My wife thinks I have that. I think I might. I think I have that selective hearing at times, too. <laughs> She's constantly repeating things to me, and I just keep looking like a deer in the headlight looks. And, honey, you going to do this? Honey, you going to do this? And finally I say, okay, I need to do that. But what about I mean, me example? We're all in this, trust me. But then you get your mind so worldly with worldly things, you're already thinking about what you're going to eat. What you got on, where you're going afterwards, you got your mind, and you haven't been paying a bit of attention. And that's why the Word of God won't go deep down the recesses, but when the Word of God, you let it go deep down, those in here are hungry and truly had a born-again experience. You hunger for the Word of God and said, I've got to have a word from the Lord. And you come in here, whether it be through the Sunday school lesson, I get things out of the Sunday school, the teaching, we have good teachers here. I get things up out of your testimony. I get it up out of the singing. I get it up out of various things. I come always looking and expecting God's going to do something. And I receive. And he blesses me. But I need that more than anything. I need the word of the Lord. But the only way it's going to come is deep down. You've got to hide it within your heart so it comes forth in fruition. Now, they that are mine, <laughs> Jesus said, you'll know them by the fruits. Now, you see, nothing wrong with the seed, nothing wrong with the sower, something wrong with the soil. Soil's not prepared right. It hasn't received. So why aren't we seeing more today in this world in which we live? We have all these things and competing for attention and all. And you know God's not going to compete for your attention. Well, I'm going to study my Bible in front of the television. Fox News is on. Oh, my. Well, Lord, let me get a verse in here. and, da, 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 and you... It's not how much you read. It's that you understand when you read it. I could read one verse. You know, Lord, I sit there and I meditate and meditate. And I just walk up and I meditate and meditate upon it. And you know, the Holy Ghost, He keeps teaching me. I asked Him, said, Lord, teach me. Teach me. Give me this message. And He teaches me. Some, some people, maybe not too many people, say, where do you get that now? I said, I get it from the Lord. I get, I get some th the spiritual revelation thing from the Lord. Oh, he's a good teacher. Oh, Holy Ghost is a simple teacher. He'll take a flower. He'll take a bee. He'll take whatever it is around me. And he'll use it and teach me little things every day. <laughs> but is it going deep down in, in you? He's not going to compete all these other things. You're, you're trying, we got all these voices today around us. Nothing wrong with technology. Nothing wrong with TV or anything. You don't have to set it out in the yard for a yard sale. Nothing wrong with your Facebook, but if you, what are you giving? Can't we get caught up more time on this? Very little time with this. Can we get caught up watching? <laughs> An hour's on end. If you really knew how many, time, how many hours people spend, then you know what's shaping us. Then in the Word of God. And is it really penetrating? And we really say, Lord, let me, I want to have a receptive heart and let the Word of God find a lodging place to transform my very life and let me live and be like you. You see, all these four, let's stand, if you will, to come with a song, if you will, piano player, song leader, whoever. Uh, if you need to come pray this morning, you need to be anointed. We'll anoint you this morning. If you're sick, got a need, you come. I may run myself, and I may shout and do all those things. I'm just telling you, yes, there's some emotion. Yes, there's some feeling. You feel the Holy Ghost. Not all the time you're going to feel the Lord. You can't go by everything off your feeling. You have to be led by the Spirit of God, and you have to know the voice of God in order to be led. Now, 
in talking sometimes in speech, when one does not know how to talk right, then they often need to check their hearing because they're maybe not hearing right. That's very good. Are you listening? Sometimes we go by whatever everything else is being said and you're making things instead of what God... What is God saying? What does God want me to do? Don't let pressure and influences without come against you all these things. What is God saying? And then you need to do what the Lord says to do. If anyone has a need, you come. If you would sing. If you're here today, don't know the Lord. You can be saved today. You can receive the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God in your heart and your life. Let Him save you.